add is just a dash of salt just to show how these work so I've stirred it a little and I'm going to attach a test strip now this one because of the sodium chloride is going to show results very quickly uh, it's already up to two you don't have to have much chloride in the water to, to show results if you look closely you can see that the water is up to seven the reaction is behind it. Okay, the test is completed. This is our chloride test setup paper towels, wood shims, a uh, sharpie for marking on the shims, and the Quantab test strips. There's a trowel on the blue lid or some binder clips. There's the Quantab test strips themselves. And then there's some uh, plastic ball freezer containers. We use the small ones for soil and water samples. What we're doing here is collecting a water sample from a stream below a well with a surface casing problem. Using one of the ball containers. We don't fill up the container and when I am trying to put in the uh, test strip I dropped it accidentally into the container. You can't get the strips that tells you when the test is done wet. You'll see it slip out of the clip there. You only need a small amount of water. The test is complete after a couple minutes and there was just a trace of chloride. The other thing we were looking for in the stream was seeing if there were bubbles. At this site there were two large water puddles in a low area in about the location of where we thought the pit might have been. There were a large number of deer tracks. So what I'm doing is marking with a sharpie on the shims the last digits of the well API number and a test number W1, W2. And then I'll attach the test strips to the shims with binder clips. I found after attaching that I wrote the the numbers on the wrong end of the shim so I had to rewrite it. I'll be pushing the shim into the mud so the bottom of the test strip is still in the water and not touching the mud. When the test is done, just pull the shim. had about 0.8 on the quad tab, it's still less than 30. We use the small blue lidded ball containers for soil and water samples and I make a mark on them. That's about how much soil I want to put in. 
this spot is on a well where there was some exposed pit liner. The operators come back in and cut the pit liner so it's no longer visible. I'm taking a sample at that spot. It's, it's very hard clay. What happened was I hit the poor pit liner and I couldn't dig any deeper. We try not to pierce pit liner because if there is pit waste we don't want to breach the pit liner. And I'll put approximately as, as much would fill the the container up to that mark. It's hard to tell in this case because the mud is so clumpy. So we have a single soil sample here. If there had been multiple samples, we would have written a soil test uh, letter and number on a piece of masking tape and would transfer it from this lid to this lid. This is a big clump of clay. This distilled water, we're going to fill it up to the black line there. Approximately how much soil there was. Okay. This is the larger size ball uh, preserves container. 30 seconds. soil sample has settled so that there's a water layer and a soil layer. We're going to be testing just the water. Attach one of the test strips so just the end is in the water. The bottom of the orange part of the test strip, if it, uh, the water goes up that and if there's uh, silt in the water, it will plug the titrator. Okay, the test is complete. It's possible to here to see that the strip is turned completely dark. Uh, there's just a trace of chloride. 